what is the connection between carnivore and reducing heart attack risk? I'm a 50 year old male strict carnivore for six months and keep hearing about men younger than me having heart attacks. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very concerning, isn't it? And, um, you know, when you consider the fact that the first heart attack diagnosed and confirmed on autopsy in America was in 1912 and there wasn't a single case reported in the literature uh, confirmed on autopsy of someone dying from a heart attack, then uh, you have to sort of wonder why the hell that is and why 10 years later became one of the biggest killers and then a few years after that became the number one killer in America. Even though we're eating the least amount of meat in America uh, than we were in 200 years before or since. And so in the 1800s, we're eating far more meat. Oh, people are only living to their 30s. Well, people in their 30s have heart attacks now. People in their 20s have heart attacks now. Uh, my friend, uh, Dr. Uh, Ankur Verma, is an ER physician in India, and they eat three kilos of meat per person per year on average. And he's seeing 17 year old vegetarian kids come into the, heart, the hospital with a heart attack. The hell is that? So people are just 17 is not old enough, I guess. Um, it's, it's, it's pretty wild uh, what people the mental gymnastics that people can do to deny reality in, in front of their faces. The average life expectancy from birth in 1850 was 38, but the average life expectancy from age 10 years old, if you made it to 10, was 56. So, and when you get to 20, it's 66 and so on. So if you get into adulthood and middle age, you lived as long or longer than people do now. And so it's just that the childhood mortality rate was very high. And, uh, and early, early deaths were high because it's, you know, it was a hard life. You know, we, we have it pretty piss easy now in the West, you know, you go out, go to Bangladesh and, uh, you know, go, go see how they live. Not even in the refugee camps where I was working, just go see rural Bangladesh or even urban Bangladesh. The vast majority of people are living under very different conditions than, than we are. And they have a uh, life expectancy to, uh, compare that to. India, their average life expectancy from birth is around 60, 60 something, right? And they're all vegetarians. Well, wouldn't that mean that, you know, uh, that, uh, you know, being vegetarian is bad? Oh, well, but there's infant mortality and there's this and there's, oh, okay. So now, now there's a distinction, but not when it goes the other way. So um, why does, you know, what's the connection between carnivore and, and reducing heart attacks? Well, the, the, the simple thing is, is that you're, you're removing out things that can be causative, you know, I mean, cigarettes, smoking, um, nicotine can cause damage to the artery lining. Diabetes causes damage to the lining of your arteries through glycation. You're going to keep your blood sugar down. You're going to keep your insulin down and, uh, uh high fat meat-based ketogenic diets like a carnivore diet have been shown in clinical trials in humans to reverse type two diabetes. That's one of the biggest risk factors for developing heart attack and heart disease and stroke. And um, so that would be diabetes and metabolic syndrome, both of which have been shown to be reversible with ketogenic, um, uh, high fat ketogenic diets like a carnivore diet. And people all around the world are reversing their diabetes with by going on a high fat carnivore diet. Uh, that is ketogenic and getting rid of seed oils and these things, these industrial products that have never existed in nature ever. And um, then you, uh, when you cook with them, they can make uh, trans fats. They can, they can partially hydrogenate and you make um, trans fats that are extremely toxic. They don't exist in nature either. And um, you know, that's why these things are illegal now because it's such a high risk of uh, developing heart disease and, and other sorts of health issues. And when you cook with these plant oils, they, you know, uh, they can turn into uh, trans fats. So that's not good. You don't want those. But I mean, the, the, the plant oils themselves um, can be harmful as well. So you're just eliminating out all these different things. And so it's an elimination diet. You're just you're just cutting out things that are bad for you. So it's like, you know, what what is the connection between, you know, uh, not drinking alcohol and doing drugs and certain health outcomes. Well, you're just not doing drugs and drinking alcohol, which damage your body and can precipitate these health issues. Same thing with carnivore. You're just eating what humans have been eating since humans have been humans. And so your body's just going to work normally and you're not bringing in all these other sorts of harmful additives. Um, 
And for those who said that, you know, people died in their 30s, you know, before the 20th century, just remind them that since the 1700s, the minimum required age to run for president of the United States was 35 minimum, right? And uh, you look at all the founding fathers, all these like white haired old men, uh, usually wearing wigs because they lost all their hair, right? So tell me again how we only living to be uh, 35 again. So, um, you know, John Adams was born in the mid 1700s and he uh, was 92 years old when he died. Jefferson, I think, was 60, oh, it was 84. And um, uh, Washington was in his late 60s. And then he, you know, caught pneumonia working out in the field and just getting soaked wet and, um, and decided not to change because he didn't want to be late to dinner. He was very punctual. It was just all about you know, gen gentlemanly manners and and um that was, that was very important to him and um you know it, it cost him he got bad pneumonia and um pneumonia and he got very sick and he ended up dying probably from all the things that they were doing at the time you know all the bloodletting and cupping and all that sort of stuff and it was weeks and weeks and weeks before he died uh but yeah he unfortunately died so you know unless something killed them they they lived to be in their 80s and 90s for you know centuries you know and so uh, and yet there were no heart attacks and strokes confirmed on autopsy in america before 1912 and then in the 1920s it's massively increased in the 1930s it's the number one killer in america and it stayed that way and it just sort of kept going up and um you know now the prevalence and incidence the new heart attacks people having their first heart attack is getting more and more um common so you know in the in the 19 you know so you know liars and people that are trying to purposefully mislead you we'll use this line um that uh that the cardiovascular mortality rate peaked in the 60s and 70s and then started coming down right when we started you know going away from eating meat and fat and cholesterol and, and putting people on statins but that's not what we said so the rate the incidence the the you know, the, how common heart disease was and how common heart attacks was went up and increased dramatically, actually. And worldwide, deaths have increased dramatically as well. Uh, just in America, the mortality rate, and these are age-adjusted numbers. Always remember that age-adjusted means they've changed the numbers and you, you know, you have to, you have to sort of say, well, what did you change them to? What are the raw numbers? So don't age-adjust them. Why the hell are you age-adjusting them? Just tell me how many people have had a heart attack. How many people have died from a heart attack? They don't tell you that. They only tell you the age adjusted. It's, it is almost impossible to find the un, uh, unage adjusted numbers. I actually haven't been able to find the non-age adjusted uh, mortality, cardiovascular mortality. I have not been able to find them. And I've had um, you know, research assistants and, and uh, other people that have not been able to find them either. It's very difficult. It's almost as if someone doesn't want you to see them. Hey everyone, really happy to announce a new sponsor for the show and for everybody down in Australia, Stockman Steaks, who are delivering high quality grass fed and finished pasture raised beef and other meats, flash frozen and vacuum sealed to your door. Something that I've been enjoying a lot of myself recently as well. They also have a great range of specialty items such as high fat keto mints and carnivore beef and organs mints with liver, kidneys and beef heart as well. So use code CHAFEE today for a free order of beef mints or another specialty gift along with your order at stockmanstakes.com.au and i'll see you over there thanks guys so but that's not what we're talking about we're talking about the prevalence we're talking about the incidence we're talking about the percentage of people in society that have heart disease we're talking about the the how many people a year get diagnosed with heart disease well that's just screening that's just better diagnostics okay what about first-time heart attacks that's going up too. So the number of people having their first heart attack and surviving is going up. We have better interventions. We have better access to medical care. We have way lower smoking rates in the 1920s and before when heart, heart disease almost didn't exist, 80% of men smoked, right? And so now it's far less than that. And yet we have a far higher rate of heart disease. And, uh, and deaths from heart disease, actually, than in the 1920s when it was 80% uh, male smoking rate. So, you know, I mean, this is back when they were like telling athletes, you, you should smoke because it opens up your lungs and gets your, your cardiovascular <laughs> system going. Uh, just crazy. But 
it, um, it, it is the case that the first people having their first heart attacks is going up. So why is that? Since we're reducing, we've reduced red meat by over a third, reduced fat, uh, uh, saturated fat and cholesterol by the same, in, increased fruits and vegetables by 30 and 40%, increased heart healthy grains, increased um, heart healthy uh, unsaturated vegetable oils by over threefold and um, and replaced uh, you know these calories that you're, you're missing out from animal fats with uh, plant oils and sugar. You know, and sugar is supposed to be, not bad for it. It's not supposed to cause heart disease. But then why the hell is heart disease imp- increasing? Why are people having more heart attacks? Why are people all around the world dying of heart attacks and strokes more than they ever were before? And that that and those worldwide statistics you can get, and those uh, are increasing. And the deaths from cardiovascular disease is increasing beyond the rate of population growth around the world. Right. So you're outstripping just the how, how how many people are out there. Right. So it's not just raw numbers. It's percentage of the population is going up and up and up. And like I said, in India, there are some of the sickest people and most metabolically sick people. They have some of the highest rates of diabetes. They're all plant based. Right. Now, the traditional, you know, uh, vegetarian uh, Indian diet, like I said, you know, my, my friend, Dr. Anker Verma, he's treating 17 year old kids, vegetarians. They're having heart attacks. 26 year old lady came in, had a stroke. This is crazy. I mean, you're destroying the potential that this person had for their whole life. You're just destroying an entire life. And, um, and, and then people are just, Oh, it's the meat. It can't be the meat because, um, or not, not the meat alone anyway, because these people don't eat meat, you know, three, three kilos of meat per year. And 20 years ago, they were eating five kilos of meat per year and they were healthier. They're worse now. The, the, you know, diabetes rates in India for these vegetarian population is 25%. And that's in urban and rural areas, right? And that's published in top journals, and recent studies published in top journals. Um, 25% of the population uh, is type 2 diabetic. Contrast that with America when everybody says, oh, America, they're all fat and slobby and junk food and this and that and blah, blah, blah. And Americans are just the least healthy people on earth. The diabetes rate in America is 9%. Diabetes rate in India, where they're vegetarian and all super healthy, is 25%. So why doesn't that show up in the blue zones, right? Why don't, why don't we make a movie called The Anti-Blue Zones? You have all these places that go strictly against that blue zone ideology and, and blue Blue zones are anti-blue zones too because they, they disprove their own theory because most of them eat way more meat than they said they did. Um, and um, and they, they lied on a lot of other different fronts as well. But, um, you know, you have an entire subcontinent of India. Like, oh, look at this little population. This that. How about you look at 1.4 billion people who are largely vegetarian and only eat three kilos of meat per year and see that they're the sickest people on earth? How would you look at that? And, um, and and tell me what you think. You can check your actual objective markers or your CAC score or uh, your carotid Doppler and see what's going on. I have a number of patients that have been reversing their atherosclerosis. This is all anecdotal, but this is, it's, they are reversing it. I had a, a gentleman in my, my Patreon, uh, Chip, who had 100% uh, stenosis blockage of his right carotid artery and uh, a year before he started, uh, you know, a, a year ago, he was on carnivore for a year.